Did you know about the Donald Trump of football? The American president who became infamous for his inflammatory agenda that has caused literal riots and violence has almost an identical counterpart in the footballing world. Bruno De Carvalho first stood for president of Sporting CP in 2011, but lost out to Godinho Lopez despite winning the popular vote. His background as a former sporting ultra and his social initiatives like his program for sports integration of at-risk youths meant he was seen as a man of the people. Much like his American counterpart, he contested the results of the election and many fans protested outside the club's grounds. Two years later, he managed to get his wish, winning in an 86% landslide. His first term actually went swimmingly, as he managed to reduce the club's debts and make sporting one of Europe's most profitable clubs through his penchant for finding sponsorship deals and player sales. On the pitch, the club started challenging for titles and won the Portuguese Cup in 2015. The man who led sporting to that triumph, Marco Silva, was sacked because he didn't wear an official sporting suit during a game. However, this was a mere facade, so De Carvalho could bring in Jorge Jesus, who he had managed to lure away from arch-rivals Benfica in an amazing coup. De Carvalho was even seen as a visionary at the time, supporting the implementation of VAR and calling for both increased accountability and better pay regarding referees. The election of 2017 was therefore a no-brainer for many sporting fans, and De Carvalho was re-elected. His wannabe strongman personality gained many supporters within the rank and file of the sporting fans as he was seen as a no-nonsense president who would not let agents, officials or governing bodies bully him and his club. In the tribalistic world of football, such an attitude can make you very popular but it can also lead you to your downfall, as was the case with De Carvalho. His main weapon used in expressing his various dissatisfaction was his Facebook page, where he could complain endlessly about officiating, club finances, fan behavior, the sporting academy and the team performance. He managed an amazing portfolio of feuds ranging from the president of Portugal to the two Davids of West Ham. Sullivan and Gold were reportedly called the Dildo Brothers by De Carvalho who denied accusation and called its critics offended virgins. His attitude reached a boiling point in April 2018 when he criticized the sporting players after a 2-0 defeat to Atletico de Madrid in the Europa League. He stated that the players will face punishment for their performances and singled out several of the first team squad as lacking commitment. The players banded together and via an Instagram post made their feelings known, to which De Carvalho responded by doubling down on his stance. Fans booed him at Sporting's next two games where De Carvalho decided to sit in the dugout and at the second game, once the crowd made their feelings apparent, he faked a back injury and made a hasty exit. One month later, 50 hooded men stormed the Sporting training grounds, assaulting the players and threatening their lives just days before the Portuguese Cup final. Following the incident, nine players cancelled their contracts, among them Bruno Fernandes, Fernandes, Rafa Leao and Rui Patricio and the team lost the cup final. De Carvalho was forced to step down and has been blamed for instigating the assault and he was indeed charged with kidnapping and terrorism. He was acquitted in 2020 but what is undeniable is that the atmosphere he fostered at the club is a direct cause for the incident, following the exact same footsteps of his transatlantic counterpart in his way of behaving. Nowadays he is a DJ and has recently celebrated his marriage. I would like to thank Sam Fonseca very much for helping me out with the research for this video. You can find all things Alvalade, his channel, tagged at my post. They talk about everything sporting and even have an interview with De Carvalho on their channel. Thank you so much for watching.